Hey guys, Christian Madaf Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 4 from the May 2009 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see these solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so it says on February 28th, 2009, Parkinson extracts the following information from his ledger. So we have a little table here. And they're giving us the balances for sales, purchases, opening stock, and closing stock, right? So March 1st, 08 is opening one year before Feb 28th, 09. What do they want us to do? It says to prepare the journal entries, general journal entries, sorry, to close those accounts to Parkinson's appropriate final account. Okay. So, of course, they just kind of enumerate those items here and say it's with six marks. Okay. Now, I feel like a lot of you all aren't actually taught what closing entries are, but I could be wrong. If you were taught what closing entries are, comment in the chat below. Sorry, not in the chat. Put a comment below saying, yes, sir, I was taught what closing entries are. If you wouldn't, tell me that as well. Tell me, you know, no, sir, I was never taught about closing entries. But you might want to watch what I do first before you comment yes or no. Okay, let's take a look. Now, what closing entries are, are simply transferring the balances from temporary or nominal accounts to the income statement at the end of a period. Those accounts, accounts of revenues and expenses, are closed off. Their balances are reduced to zero because they're transferred and summarized, transferred to, sorry, and summarized in the income statement to give net profit or net loss. So, first of all, this table here, sales. Sales is a revenue. Revenue is a source of money. Capital is a source of money. Liabilities is a source of money. They have credit balances, right? So generally speaking, the majority of items with credit balances are sources of money. Sales is a revenue, which is a source of money. Now, to transfer or to close off the sales account to the income statement, or maybe they wanted it to say trading account because this is a slightly older paper. To do that, you're going to have to debit the sales account and credit the income statement. Let me explain why. So again, the sales account has a credit balance because it's a revenue account. To transfer a credit balance out of the account in which it is in, anyhow, right? You're going to have to remove the credit balance. To do that, you have to debit the account for the amount you are removing. Remember, two sides of the account work against each other. They decrease each other, right? They counterbalance each other. So to transfer a credit, a credit balance out, you debit the account to remove it and you credit wherever it's sent to, which in this case is the income statement. So we're going to see that in the general journal. So don't forget, in the general journal, debit entries come first, followed by credit entries, and the credit entries are indented. So like I said, you're transferring out of the sales account. So you're going to debit sales, credit income statement, or maybe trading account, and you're going to put to close the sales account to the income statement, right? The next account they wanted it to close was the purchases account. Now, purchases is an expense. Expenses are, have debit balances, right? Things that use money or which are paid for, those have debit balances. Primarily assets, because they have to pay for assets, right? So those have debit balances. Expenses, you have to pay for expenses. Those have debit balances. Drawings, well, value kind of goes there. Money goes there. So that, that's why it has a debit balance. But that's also because it's a reduction in capital. But before I go off on a whole tangent, long story short, Purchases is an expense, it has a debit balance. To remove a debit balance from the account and transfer it to the income statement, you're going to have to credit the purchases account. Let me say that again. Purchases has a debit balance. To remove the debit balance from the purchases account, you have to credit the purchases account. And of course, you have to debit the other account where you send any balance, which is the income statement. So in the general journal, you're going to debit income statement or trading account if that was the one they wanted it to use and credit purchases and they're going to just put to close the purchases account to the income statement the next item is open in stock now open in stock is an asset right but in the calculation of cost of goods sold right it's open in stock plus purchases so it's actually combined with purchases to give cost of goods available so you can consider it like like an expense because it has a debit balance right so again to transfer debit balance out of an account you have to credit that account and debit where you're sending that balance. So you're going to debit the income statement or trading account and credit the purchase, sorry, inventory, my bad. I was confused with the previous question, right? 
credit inventory through its March 8 and to put the transfer opening stock. Now, the last item is the closing stock. Now, the funny part about it is closing stock is actually technically transferred from the income statement back to the stock account. I know that sounds kind of counterintuitive, but that's how it works, right? If you think about it, the closing stock figure is subtracted from the cost of goods sold in order to, sorry, cost of goods available for sale in order to find cost of goods sold. So if it's decreasing a debit, it has to be a credit where it is. I know that sounded kind of weird, but just follow me on this, right? Another way to think about it is, okay, we have to record closing stock. Stock is an asset. To record an asset, you have to debit the asset account. So we are going to be debiting the stock account, the closing stock, right? Inventory. We need to credit it, and the credit goes to the income statement, all right? And it says here to record closing stock, long story short, right? So again, I don't know how many of you all are actually taught about closing entries because it's not something that comes very often, especially in these more recent times, right? Being all in, all in 2010s into the early 2020s, right? So if you guys have seen this question before, let me know how you dealt with it in the comment section below. And don't forget, let me know if you all were taught how to deal with closing entries in the comment section below. Okay, let's take a look at part B, which has some regular T accounts, which should be a bit easier to digest. Okay, let's take a look there. Okay, so it says Parkinson provides the following additional information. So we have a nice long table here, right, which I'm going to have to kind of cut down somehow. Um, so we have at the top, they have the payments, right? Wages paid by check, insurance paid by check, commissions received by check, advertising paid by check. Then we have opening balances, March 1st, 08, accrued wages, prepaid insurance, commissions receivable, prepaid advertising, okay. And we have some closing balances. So we have accrued wages again, prepaid insurance again, commission receivable again, but advertising owing. So it's switched from a prepayment to an accrual. They are telling us from the information provided, prepare the following T accounts showing clearly the amount to be shown in the income statement. So they want us to do all four accounts, right? We have three expense accounts, wages, insurance, and advertising, and one revenue account, commissions. So that's with 13 marks. Okay, so let's pull up the wages account first, right? So the opening balance in wages is an accrued balance. That's a liability. Accrued expenses are liabilities. By the way, before we get into it, if you want to check out a video on how to prepare expense accounts, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. Okay, so again, accrued wages, accrued expenses are current liabilities and liabilities have credit balances at start. So you're going to see the opening balance brought down on the credit side there. Okay, the next item we're seeing is wages paid by check, 12530 When you pay an expense, you debit the expense account. So that's going to go on the debit side of the expense account. Next, we have a closing balance of accrued wages, 1990. So again, an accrued expense has a credit balance because it's classified as a current liability. Now that's going to be brought down on the credit side here. But before you can be brought down on the credit side, you have to be carried down from the debit side. Now, of course, the totals in both sides of the account are supposed to be the same, but we are clearly missing a figure here. What is that figure? That is the wages expense incurred for the period, the income statement figure. So all we have to do is take the total on this side and subtract the total on the, well, sorry, the one figure on this side. And that's going to give us 12,490. That's the income statement figure. Okay, let's take a look at the insurance expense account. So pull up the T account there. Okay, open and balance. It says prepaid insurance 450. A prepaid expense is an asset. Assets have debit balances. Okay, next, we have insurance paid by check 1420. When you pay an expense, you enter that on the debit side of the account. For a closing balance, it is still prepaid 310. So that is going to be brought down on the debit side. But prior to being brought down on the debit side, it has to be carried down from the credit side. Now, of course, when you add up, well, the total is supposed to be 1870 on both sides because this side has 1870, this one has 310. The balancing figure is the income statement figure. You're going to take the 1870 and subtract the 310. That's going to give us the income statement figure, the amount incurred for insurance expense that will be transferred to the income statement. Okay, let's take a look at the commission's revenue account. Now, that's a revenue account that's so going to have the opposite rules for expense accounts. So first things first, we have commissions receivable 280. Now a receivable revenue is an asset. 
It's like a, it's a, like a crude revenue. It's money owed to you as an asset. That's going to be brought down on the debit side, as we can see here. Next, we have commissions received by check. So that's going to be debited in the bank because it's money coming in. But you have to credit where the money comes from. And the money is coming from the commission's revenue account. Now, the closing balance also says commissions receivable 390. That is, again, is a closing debit balance because it's a, well, accrued revenue or revenue receivable is an asset and assets have debit balances. But before you can be brought down on the debit side, you have to be carried down from the credit side. Now, again, what's going to happen is your total is going to be 1990 here and it should also be 1990 here as well. But we're missing a figure. What is that figure? That's the income statement figure, commission revenue earned, right? Income statement. It's on the debit side here because when you debit here, you're going to credit the income statement and revenues are credit items in your income statement. Okay, the last item is the advertising expense account. Now, they started off with an opening prepaid balance. That's going to be on the debit side of the account because prepaid expenses are assets and assets have debit balances. Did we pay anything for advertising? Yes, we did. Advertising paid by check. 450 that too will go on the debit side of the expense account the closing balance is advertising owing which means we have a this is advertising accrued and accrued expenses are liabilities which will have credit balances at the end but before you can be brought down on the credit side you have to be carried down from the debit side like so now what that means is that we have to add up everything here and that total will simply match the income statement figure all right <clears throat> okay we have just one more thing they asked us I'll, I'll tell you what it is right so they said state the concept that is used to adjust expense and revenue accounts at the end of an accounting period that is simply the accruals concept long story short and that's the end of the question okay guys so there you have it that's the solution for question four from the may 2009 pua paper two if you have any questions about it please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and i'll get back to you when i have a chance if you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful payment handles. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.